In this mail art piece, I'm going to be highlighting Dina Wakely's new Media Acrylic Paints. And I'm also going to be using this stencil by Stencil Girl called Mimosa. It's, um, it really does create a really cool pattern. And I'm going to use this sort of as the focal point for my mail art piece. So to get started, I have two envelopes. They're both um, catalog envelopes. They're um, the six by nine size, and I do need two of these. So I'm gonna set those aside, and also just a piece of watercolor paper. This really doesn't matter the size so much um, as just a little larger than your envelope if you wanna duplicate what I'm doing. So, and then just um, other supplies that I've shown um, with this video as well as some scrap papers, paints, paintbrushes, stencils, rubber stamps, ink pens, all of that. I'm be using an assortment of things. So to start out, I'm going to use the envelope, one of the envelopes to start with. And what I wanna do uh, with this particular envelope is I'm gonna use a glue stick. I like Yoohoo, it's my favorite. And I'm going to put glue on just this side of it. We're using two catalog envelopes because we're going to create our mail art piece and then we're going to stitch them together. So it's not really going to be just the one envelope itself. And I like to work that way because it doesn't limit me if I want to add stitching or anything. I can do that because I'm putting two of them together. I'm trimming off the excess, excess paper. I make, I don't cut down the scrap paper first and make it fit. It's much easier to attach it and then just trim off the extra. All right, now we have just a piece of the envelope that's left here with the scrap paper. I'm gonna take some white acrylic paint. This is Golden's Titanium White and a palette knife. I'm just gonna take the paint, it's very thick, it's a thicker paint with the palette knife. Not a lot of paint on here, just a little bit. And I'm just going to lightly add some of the color, some of the paint to the surface and then let that dry. Now if you have a heat tool, you can use a heat tool to heat set it, but that's completely optional. And then I also want to use a Stabilo Marksall pencil. This is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. The Stabilo Marks All Pencil, I'm gonna use it in black, and I'm also gonna need a little bit of a little paintbrush. Doesn't matter what kind of paintbrush. But I want to mark my uh, envelope here, just scribbling a little bit of the pencil around it. And this is what I wanna to do to grunge it up. I really like that grungy feel. And this Marks All Pencil does give you that. What's really cool about this is it acts as a resist where the paint is, whether it's dry or not. And so that really does a nice job in grunging that up. So I'm gonna set this aside now to dry, and then we'll move on to the larger piece that will be stitched on the other envelope to create the other side of our mail art piece. Next, we're gonna work on the watercolor piece of paper. I'm gonna use an assortment of Dina Wakely paints and some other tools. Um, some rubber stamps and some ink pens and some mark making tools to uh, paint this piece of watercolor paper and really bring it to um, bright, bright colors. I like to also use, um, with Dina's paints, I like to add a little bit of water to them to um, water them down, which does make them look a little um, like watercolor. The first thing I wanna do though is I'm gonna add some scrap paper. This is just some ledger paper I had in my stash. And I just want to add a few random pieces to the front of the mail art piece. It doesn't matter where, um, where you put them. And it can be any kind of paper, whatever you've got that you like. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And that ought to do it. 
You could even grab from the original pieces that you use, whatever you used, you could add them as well. So why don't we do that? We'll grab a little bit of that. And I'll just put that here. All right. Now I'm just basically the way that I approach this is I just start with the first layer. You know, what do I want to put down? And I think I'm going to use this um, circle stencil to create some turquoise uh, circles on the surface. And I'm going to use my finger to add these. I'm not going to use a paintbrush. So um, I've just squirted out the paint onto a palette and I'm just using my fingers to apply through the stencil the um, color. And Dina's paints work really well together. All the colors just are vibrant. They're really, really pretty and they really look nice when they're used together. Okay, so I lift that. And that's her um, turquoise. Just going to clean my finger on there. All right, so now we have um, a stencil that's been applied. And you can heat set that to let it dry, or you can just move to another area on your watercolor paper and work on that. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to turn mine around a little bit. And I think I'm going to take some, do some blackberry violet and probably a little bit of the tangerine. I'm just squirting it off to the side on a palette, and I think I'm going to use the lime as well. And I'm going to use a paintbrush this time, and I'm actually going to use her paintbrush. Um, this is one from her set of four brushes. And I'm adding a little bit of water to the palette so that when I brush the um, paint on, it actually has um, this, it really does have a, a feel of watercolor, which I just think is stunning. It's really, really pretty. And it didn't take a lot of water to make it look like that. It's very cool. And then that had just a little less water in it, so you can see it's a little bit darker. So I'm just going to use an assortment of brushes while I'm working and add some water, just a little bit, to some more of the colors. This is that um, turquoise with a little bit of water added. And in, if it's not quite dry, you'll see that it'll blend a little bit with the other color which I think is really pretty. And then let's add in a little bit of the lime. You can see how just how stunning these colors are together. They're really, really pretty. That looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and add color all around this as well. Just by brushing the color in with my paintbrush. And I am adding a little bit of water as I go. Now that's the tangerine. That one's really pretty too. I might add a little bit of tangerine onto the ends here. Maybe even there. And I just keep moving it around as I work. And in some spots, I'm probably just going to use the paint with not quite as much water, but I really like it when it's watered down. Maybe go around a few of those circles. Now I'm going to continue to add color and continue blending where I see that it needs um, color or um, texture. I'm going to continue to use the same colors, um, Dina's colors, and just keep adding until I'm happy with the way things look.
going to use some um, of the umber. It's a, it's a brown color, and I really like it because it um, it's not as stark as black, but it gives a nice color. I'm just going to use a very fine brush here to create some marks on the page in just different ways, whatever, whatever you like, different shapes that work for you. I'm kind of doing these scallops because I want to put a scallop on the envelope. So I'm just uh, on the flap of the envelope. So I'm just adding a little bit of the, the brown, this umber to the page here and there. Again, it's just whatever, whatever you think looks good, whatever's appealing to you, just kind of go with the flow. Next, I'm going to add in a little bit of white. White and dark colors are always really good for contrast. And it also helps tone down areas where you may have a little bit more white, a uh, little bit more color than you want, or you just want to tone things down. Works good for that. So I'm just going to continue to add color and more of the paint. Next, I'm going to take the Mimosa stencil and I'm going to place it down onto my watercolor paper. And I'm going to use my fingers to add this. I'm thinking probably right about there. I'm going to use Payne's Gray. It's very, rather thick. It's um, by Golden. And I'm just, I really want this to be messy. I'm just going to rub it on Gorgeous. All right, and then I'm going to put another one um, right here on the other side. Once everything's dry, I like to come in at this point with my Stabilo Marksol pencil and just start doing some marking, some outlining. I am going to run over this with the paintbrush, but for right now, I just get the marks on there, wherever I want to put those. And then I use a brush with just a little bit of water in it. And you can use a paintbrush or you can use a water brush. So let's try the water brush. And what it does is it, it does um, work as a, like a watercolor, but as I showed you on that first um, envelope, it creates this really grungy look and it really starts to make things pop as you can see they really start to stand out and again that grungy feel comes through now you can use a paintbrush but this is just a water brush that has water in it and you can kind of spread that around a little bit even too which is kind of nice and you can add more if you want to but it's coming along nicely I'm going to put a little more here. And again, it's great for contrast because it's dark. All right. 
Now, in addition to that contrast, it's always good to have some white as contrast. So I like to use these little, they're just little canisters, little plastic canisters. You can use just about anything for mark making. And I might go in at this point and just start adding these little circles. It just gives more pattern and more texture to the surface. And I don't worry about going over things I've already done. That's what I want to do. Alright, so we've added some of those. And of course we want that to dry. But it's also a good time if you wanted to add some splatters. I like to do that with my um, with the white or the dark paint. I just added a little bit of water to the white paint. And then I can just come in at this point and just tap my brush a little bit with that um, paint in the brush with a little bit of water. Okay, so let's let that dry. Now I'm going to use a regular number two pencil to add some scribbly marks, um, more little circles, and just marks. More like, think outline, thinking outline. Um, you can do some random shapes. You can do little pluses, little circle, like pie circles. You can just scribble random marks. That's what I like. Just scribble it up. Mark it up like a kid. Now, in addition to using the pencil, I also like to use a black pen. This is the food ball. And I'm just, I like to do different things. Lines, marks. Um, for this one, I thought, I like this little spot right here. I'm going to go in and just do a little cluster of these little crosses. And I also like to do dotted lines because the dotted lines look a lot like um, stitching. So I think right here, and actually I see a spot where I used my Stabilo and I didn't mark it. You can see how that really popped right there. So I think here I'm just going to do these dotted lines. We are going to do some stitching on this, so this will be kind of cool because it does just emulate the stitching. It's a great outlining tool as well, these little dotted lines, or dashed lines rather, not dotted lines. I think I'll put a few here. Just kind of move it around. I don't really think much about it. All right, and then let's do maybe even some scribbles or marks that are also made with the pen. In addition to using your pens, you can also use rubber stamps. So I'm going to use, this is the um, X Mark stamp from Paper Bag Studios. And I'm just using a black dye-based ink pad. And I'm just going to randomly stamp around the uh, watercolor paper, just wherever you want some marks. And all that does is just continue to add um, layers to the, to, the, um, to the work. And then here is a, another stamp also from Paper Bag Studios. This is called Small Chevron. And I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, marks with this one as well. Any stamps are good, whatever you have in your stash. Just adds more texture to your piece. So it's really starting to um, come alive now. Next I'm going to add, uh, this is the Signo Uniball white pen. And I thought I'd go in and maybe do some marks on the stencil area. Can be little circles. I'm going to do those little crosses again because they carry on with part of the other stuff that I've done. So I'm just going to, not the whole thing, but just some of the areas I'm going to add those. And you can do circles since I have those in my pattern as well. I think those might look good too. But for now, I think I'm just going to stick with the crosses. And I like the way that look, design element looks on this. But I also want to go into some of the other areas and do some highlighting and marking, just like I did with the black pen and the Stabilo. I also want to do that with the white pen. And it just adds more depth to, um, to the piece. Like, for instance, these circles right here. Let's kind of go in there and maybe fill those in even. And that looks good. 
And then over here, I think I'll do the same thing by adding some on that dark color. That really makes that stand out more. And then let's add in maybe some of those design elements, those uh, crosses as well, because that plays in off the whole pattern. Yeah, that looks good. So just kind of look at it and see what you think it needs. And then I just, like I said, I keep building it up until I'm happy with it. And I think it looks pretty good. I might go over here and add a little bit more, maybe some pen. Um, I know I did those little loops, but I think some dotted lines might look pretty on this here, just to make it stand out a little bit more. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So just step away from it and take a look at it and see if there's anything that you feel like it needs, but just keep building the layers up. That's really the secret, is just keep adding to it and building it up. Next, I'm gonna take the other envelope, the one that we did not, not put the paper on, and I'm gonna cut the flap off of it because we're not gonna need the flap. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Now, I made this initial piece way bigger than it needed to be. I like to do that just to have a lot to work with. But we want to cut it down to where it fits onto this, em this envelope. So I just kind of eyeball it at this point and decide where I think that spot's going to be. And I I'm thinking it's probably going to be right about there. So what I'll do is I will do like I did with the paper, and I will put glue stick on it. Now, don't worry if it's not perfect because we're going to stitch it on as well but for the most part, this is how I do it. So I take a look at this and I know that it's right in this area roughly. So I'm gonna just kind of mark it like that and put it down and then trim it just like we did with the um, other paper. I should have made this piece a little smaller, but I didn't. So this is what I have to work with. And then I have all this extra paper too and I'll show you what we're gonna do with some of that. All right, so just trim that off. And this is what we end up with, which I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted to have that little extra on this end. So since I don't have that, I really wanted to have that complement. I'm gonna go ahead and add it anyway. Just put a little bit um, right in this spot from the stencil, which I think will be perfect. So if you find that you just didn't quite get it the way you wanted it, don't worry, you can go back in and add it. It just needs a little bit to balance it. So I'm just gonna put a little on here and then I can dry it and add a little bit of my pen marks to it and see that works because now it's looking like I planned it that way. Just add a little bit more. There. I like it. Okay. And so now I can dry that and then add some of my little pen marks and it's perfect. So I'm going to set this aside for a second just so that it can dry. And that leaves me with a few pieces here to work with, actually several. And this is why I made it a little bit larger. So what I want to do next is I want to show you how I'm going to create that little scallop on the flap. This is the flap of our envelope, the one that we covered a little while ago in the beginning with the paper. Now my scallop's a little bit big, but I'm going to cut it out. I don't usually measure, so sometimes things are either too big or too small, but that's okay. Oftentimes I just kind of wing it and see what happens and what ideas come to me, come to me. Okay, so I'm going to sit these aside, and basically what we're doing is we're taking the scallop and it's going to be stitched onto um, the flap of our envelope. I don't know that I want to do it that way. I think I want to do it just like that. Nope, I want to do it like that. And then I'll cut off that little extra bit that's in there. That's what I'll do. I just want that in there. Okay, so let's cut that out. Okay. And likewise, 
What I'm going to do though is I'm not going to cut that equal with the flap. I'm going to trim it to make it look more like um, a scalloped flap. So it's going to come out a little bit. And see, that works good. It's a little weird because it's not a full circle, but that's okay. And then when it closes, it kind of looks fun like that, I think. And then let's enhance it a little bit. Let's go in with our pen. And we can even add in some of those dashed lines. and even go around the perimeter here. We're gonna do a little stitching on this, but this kind of pulls it all together. And then we'll stitch that line there, but not just yet. Okay, so now we've got this, but we also have this is the envelope size, the side you're gonna address. And what I like to do with this is take scrap paper like for instance, here's the area that we've been painting on. That's I call this the under paper. And this really matches what we've been working on. So I'm just gonna cut it. And this will be the piece of paper that I will add for my return, uh, my ship label. So I will figure out which part of that I like and I'm gonna pick maybe this much right here. And so that would, uh, it's a little bit big, so let's make it a little smaller. So let's glue that on right there. I do that a lot. You can just cut right from what you've been working on. And now it all matches, which I think is great. All right, let's put this on right about there. All right, we're not done with that yet. Now, in addition to that, we have still have all these great scraps, these little pieces here. So let's cut some strips from these scraps. And what we're going to do is we're going to embellish this side of our nail art piece. This is pretty from the scallop. Let's use that. That's a real pretty piece right there. So just start picking out some of the pieces and cut portions out that you really like and then add those and make them different sizes where they're not all the same size and just pick an odd number I think I'll just do maybe maybe five and see this orange is nice because it's contrasting and I really like that purple that looks good and then let's do this green one maybe this one And so that gives us five. Let's put that one there. And we can put them a little closer together. I don't think I want that orange one anymore. I think I want this one. There. Now, and just use, um, I'm gonna use my glue stick just to tack it in place, but I will be using the sewing machine to um, really put them down, to hold them in place. This is just to tack them in place to make it a little easier. Let's trim it. And then the last one. And that's just a really nice design element. Okay, so that gives us um, one side of our envelope. We're not quite finished with this yet, but I'm going to set it aside for now. And then we have the other piece that we just worked on. It's not quite dry. Um, so I'm going to dry this up and then I'm going to show you how to attach everything and put it all together. Before we stitch, I wanted to show you something else I like to do uh, with my uh, address side. I, I would like to enhance this label just a little. We're going to stitch on it. But how about use stickers to put the, um, the T and the O for the two. Um, these are Jack and Jill by Doodlebug Design. And they're called, uh, it's the Beetle Black. So I'm just going to take the, the T and the O and place those down. I don't know, just kind of looks fun. And then that way you have the two. 
And let's enhance that even a little bit more and use that Stabilo Marksol pencil. And I'm just going to go around this a little. And then use the water brush to uh, make that stand out a little bit more. And if you have any lifting at all, um, you can tack it down just a little bit. We're going to stitch it so it, it's, it's going to be staying in place pretty good. Okay, so let me explain to you what I'm going to do with the sewing so that when I get to it, um, you'll know exactly what it is I'm doing. All right. I can't just leave that alone. I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna add some pencil marks to it too. There we go. I like that better. More scribbles. Okay. So for this part, what I'm gonna do in the stitching is I'm going to stitch all the way around the label with a straight stitch. And then on this part here where we've added these little design elements, I'm just going to do a straight stitch back and forth across here to hold those in place and tack those in place. And then I'm going to stitch just along this part of the envelope right here to hold um, this little flap on just a little bit. Plus it adds some stitching to it, which is really pretty. And so that when it's closed, you'll see this little extra part. And that will hold it in place a little more um, rather than just the glue. And then, once we're finished with that, I'm going to attach the other piece. The back of our envelope is going to be stitched to this part. And I'm just going to stitch around the perimeter so we can leave this pocket open as it will be an envelope. So those are the first, those are the components um, to, that I'm going to do to get it to, to be stitched up. Again, I'm just using a straight stitch to do that, but you can use a fancy stitch if you like. So here's what your scalloped flap mail art piece looks like once it's stitched. The stitching really does bring out and make this um, stand out quite a bit more. Now, um, as far as the return address, you can still hand write that. You can put it at the bottom. You can write it straight across. I don't really worry about the traditional or standard way to do it, or you can just leave it off. And then we have our ship to, who it's gonna be mailed to, and then our really pretty little scalloped flap on the outside and it looks like this you got that nice stitching and so when we flip it over it looks like this and this really looks pretty it, it does really contrast and balance it out and um, I did have to decide which end I wanted to be stitched over here and I, I ultimately chose to keep this one over on this end I just liked the way it looked a little bit better now this is a little stark in my mind so I thought I would take a little bit of um, white paint and just um, add a little in here just to tone that down a little bit. You obviously don't have to do that, but I just thought that was a little too dark. Um, it just really stood out. So that kind of toned that down a little bit. But I love it. I think it looks great. And um, somebody will, I surely like to receive this. And then, of course, you've got your, you know, your contents go inside here. So there is the scalloped flap meal art piece. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.